Hi kids, it's Mrs. Frabel again. How are you? Good. I hope you're fine. I'm fine. Thanks for asking. Okay, today we're going to talk about what do fish look like. Let's talk about fish anatomy. We're just going to talk about their external anatomy today um, and their adaptations um, and why there's such a such an amazing diversity of crazies in this group of animals that have been around for so long. So here we go. I'll try to be quick. Okay. Uh, so fins. Fins are probably um, on a fish. Pretty important. This is how fish get around, right? Uh, so we talked about how uh, there are different types of fins depending on the class of fish. Osteochthian fish have um, thin, non-muscular fins that are very articulated. Um, so they use them for all kinds of things, for swimming, uh, for steering, stopping, um, backing up, all kinds of things. And that chondrichthian fish kind of have more fleshy, uh, immobile fins for the most part, especially their pectoral fins. Um, so a lot of what we're going to talk about will apply more uh, to the osteochthians fish, but it's fine. Okay. Okay. So with those fins, there are uh, specific fins on their bodies and here's what they are. Fish have pectoral fins. Um, these are one of their pairs of fins. They have two paired sets of fins and the rest are singular fins. So their pectoral fins, um, they're analogous to your arms. In fact, your arms evolved from an ancestor that was a fish, the first fish to walk on land um, to become a tetrapod. And remember those were the, you're right, Sarcopterygii fish, the, the lobe finned fish. So their pectoral fins are the same as the, the, the body parts that are on you that come out of your pectoral muscles, right? Okay. Uh, then they have their pelvic fins. Those are analogous to your hind legs, um, your legs. And these are for stabilization, steering, and stopping. Pectoral fins, stabilization, steering, and propulsion. Um, so those are the paired fins. And in osteochthian fish, both of those can be used to uh, stop the fish. They can backpedal so that they can stop in the water, and some of them can even swim backward. Um, chondrichthian fish, uh, like sharks, cannot swim backwards. They can't get their, there's no propulsion backward. Okay, um, rays can. Uh, then the singular fins, these, these are oriented down the midline of their body um, and come in ones or twos, uh, but they're all lined up down the center of their body. Dorsal fin. So they're not in pairs, but some fish have more than one dorsal fin along their dorsal surface. And again, if you don't remember your dorsal surface, remember the, the pat yourself on the back. Remember when we did the body regions? Yes, you do. Caudal fin, that's the fancy word for their tail fin. Uh, for most fish, that's for propulsion and stabilization, but not all fish. Again, it depends on their lifestyle and their ecosystem and how they how they work. Uh, anal fin, fun word, that's by their anus. It's on their ventral surface. This is for stabilization. They have then various other little ancillary um, accessory fins, if you like. Uh, they can have finlets. They can have caudal keels. Um, a lot of times these are found on fast swimming fish. Um, they're for stabilization and uh, for hydrodynamics, so the water flows over them a little bit better. And then adipose fins, not all fish have those. Not all fish have the finlets or caudal keels. Adipose are on the ventral surface um, and in front of the tail, and they they seem to be pretty enervated. They might be sensory. Um, again, the, the finlets and caudal keel are very often found on the lateral sides and just posterior to the tail. Um, and, and can be quite fancy, um, on stur surgeon fish. Yeah. Surgeon fish and some other tangs there, they'll have little finlets and little caudal spikes by their tail that are actually quite sharp used for defense. Okay. Okay. Make sure you know all of those fins. You're going to need to know them to identify them on a fish and also know what they do. Learning's fun. Okay. Here's what they look like. This is a very basic, both of these very basic generic fish bodies. Okay. Um, so, uh, if you are at home, um, draw this or draw this and label the fins. Okay. So again, we have the pectoral fins and these are up just behind the head, behind the gills, usually. 
and um, they're the ones that are mainly the ones going like this while the fish is swimming. Uh, then pelvic fins are usually just behind usually just behind those um, and a little more ventral and then the um, dorsal fin is up on their dorsal surface there might be a little finlet or a keel there there can also be finlets uh, the little sharp finlets that i talked about will be right here in front of the caudal fin which is their tail and then the anal fin um, as along the ventral surface. And again, the, the anal fin and the dorsal fins are mostly to keep the fish from rolling over in the water, keeps them stable in the water. And then the other ones, the pectoral, pelvic, and caudal are used for propulsion. Okay, so again, draw and label those. You should be taking notes. I don't think I ever have to say that, but you should always take notes with my videos. Unless you're not taking my class, you're just watching this for fun. Okay. Of course, oops. Of course, uh, again, there are differences in those fin appearances and morphologies based on how the fish lives, what it does in the water, where it, where it's from, right? So um, here are just some examples of fish with weird fins because you know I like a weirdo. Uh, so this is a freshwater fish called a pearl gourami, very often found in aquariums, very often found in my aquarium because I love them. And mostly I love them because they've got these little feelers right there. And they will reach out with them, especially if you come up to the tank or if you put your hand in the tank, they'll come up with their little feelers and they'll, they'll do this at you. And I think it's adorable. Those little feelers are actually their pelvic fins and they've got some sensory, um, sensory <laughs> ability. Gosh, I don't know why I like things like that so much, but I do. Uh, in the wild, uh, very often pro or grommies live in a little bit darker, murkier water, so they use those for sensory stuff. Um, and then there are fish like the flying gurnard and other flying fish. So I don't think the gurnard actually goes out of the water, but there are flying fish that leap out of the water and they have these huge pectoral fins. So these are their pectoral fins. They're elongated, enlarged, and then very webbed um, to give them some lift. And flying fish, which I have been lucky enough to see in the wild, um, they, they, can, they can catch some air. They can go. Um, and, and it's weird. Super cute. Uh, there are fish that walk. Um, there's a whole big group of them, toadfish, frogfish, and handfish. Um, they, they have reinforced chubby fins. They're, these are their pectoral fins, and this is <laughs> that's his pelvic fins looking like little feet. They're cute. They're also almost extinct. Uh, there's, there's quite a few that are are extinct and, and highly endangered. The red hand fish is, I think, I, I just read that they're the most uh, rare fish in the world right now, which is sad. And then the sunfish, that giant mola mola weirdo that <laughs> some of you investigated in uh, the assignment on osteichthyan fish. Uh, these guys, they're the goofiest things, and they're giant. They're enormous. They have um, almost no caudal fin because they don't propel themselves with their caudal fin. Most fish do. Um, these guys have uh, also very small pectoral fins. I don't even think they have appreciable pelvic fins. This is their dorsal fin, and this is their anal fin, and they use those for uh, swimming. Uh, I mean, they... They swim long distances, but slowly. They don't go quickly. Um, and they, 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 they wave those like this, <laughs> their dorsal fin and ventral fin, to um, maneuver and, and propel themselves. Gosh, they're weird, and I love weirdos. Okay. So fins can come in all shapes and sizes, and they might be harder to identify, but just remember that usually pectoral fins are closest to the gills. Pelvic fins are more ventral, even if they're close together, the, the pelvic fins are going to be on the ventral surface a little bit more. Okay. Look at those feet. So cute. Okay. Let's talk about how those bodies are shaped. So along with fins, well, that was interesting. Hold, please. Let me fix this one moment. Sorry, I got a little itchy on my trigger finger and I don't know what I clicked, but anyway, okay. Body shapes. So those were the fins. Let's talk about their body shapes. Cause again, um, all animals and plants, all living things are adapted to uh, function the best in their environment. That's how natural selection works. So uh, certain body types and body shapes are more prevalent 
in terms of, of where a fish lives and how it lives. So uh, the first body shape that uh, we'll talk about is fusiform, fusiform. And these are streamlined fish. This is also kind of like the the default fish shape, like when you were in, when you're a kid and you're drawing a fish, that that's what your fish looked like, right? Uh, so these guys have um, narrow, narrow snouts, wider along the middle part of their body, and then that narrows down again. Um, these guys are generally just open water swimmers. Um, they swim all of the time. They, they can be open water ocean going fish like sharks and tuna, but also like lava lake and river, other freshwater fish. If they're not sitting on the bottom or hovering at the top, they're probably a fusiform fish that swims constantly. Okay? All right, uh, another body sheep is called laterally compressed. And these I love too because they're cute. They are squished side to side. Remember, lateral is the sides. So laterally compressed, they're skinny fish. Um, two examples, these are look downs. These are a saltwater close to shore fish. They're, they look down all the time, so they're called look downs. We have them at the local um, Living Planet Aquarium here in Utah. Go see them. They're gorgeous. They're beautiful. And then freshwater, these are one of my favorite freshwater fish, discus. Um, very large, tropical, I want to say Amazonian. I could be very wrong on that. Um, <clears throat> but they're beautiful and also laterally compressed also kind of mean. Okay, okay. And then we have the other skinny, the other direction. So dorso ventrally depressed, laterally compressed, dorso ventrally depressed. So their dorsal and ventral sides are squished together. These are animals that generally live on the bottom. Uh, we call that uh, demersal or benthic. Um, they, uh, they hide out on the bottom. They might be ambush hunters or, uh, in the, in the case of a lot of rays, they are, uh, ambush hunters that come down on, come down on their prey from the, from above. Their prey hides in the bottom. They come down from above or an ambush, uh, ambush hunter like the monkfish. So his, his mouth is actually kind of on the more dorsal side of his face and they hide in the sand and then they ah, jump up and catch things out of the water creepy but beautiful okay okay all right flatfish let's have a moment for these freaks so halibut and flounders are called flatfish and they are weird because if you look at them just looking at this fish would you say that that's dorsal ventrally or laterally compressed sitting on the bottom its eyes are up here on the top you most people look at that and I've even seen this I've even seen this on some educational videos that they are dorso ventrally compressed they are not they are laterally compressed um, they are demersal they are ambush feeders but they actually when they are laying down so this little guy this side that's against the sand that is actually his lateral side his other side is pointing up so his this is one lateral surface this is the other lateral surface and then their ventral surface is <laughs> along this side dorsal surface is along that side so weird these guys start out life looking like a little tiny fusiform normal and then as they go through metamorphosis uh, they they their eyes, which are usually one eye on each side of their head, one eye migrates over to the other side and they lay on their side and uh, they, that's how they live. And you can see on this upward facing surface, you can see their lateral line and you can see the gill opening with the op operculum on top of them. So that's their, um, that's their lateral side. Uh, and there's a video, I will link it. You can watch them go through metamorphosis. It's really kind of cool, but really kind of weird. Okay. All right. Any questions so far? Email me. Great. Uh, other body shapes that you see in fish are uh, snake-like or ribbon-like, like eels. And a lot of eels, and so we talked about agnathans, um, the lampreys and hagfish that are kind of horrors, um, but important. Uh, these are not that. Remember, I mentioned that when we talked about them. So eels are actually osteichthyan fish. 
uh, that have jaws. They have an operculum. Oh, this little cutie grass seals are so cute, you guys. Oh my gosh, I love them. They <laughs> they dig little burrows in the sand that they reinforce with slime, with a little bit of their slime. All fish have slime. So they make these little burrows, and then they just stick their little heads out of the top, and then when they get when they get scared, they hide back down in their hole, and you get this whole field of them, all these little blurry things back there. Those are other grass seals. They're so cute. Anyway, I always digress. I'm sorry. So that ribbon or snake-like body uh, is just um, evolved for them to be able to hide in burrows without snagging fins, um, and then... Uh, eels like moray eels, wolf eels, um, snowflake eels, those bigger ones, um, they, they might live in holes in rocks or in between rocks. And they're, they've pretty much, uh, their, their paired fins are almost, um, vestigial and their other fins are just very reduced. So, uh, they, they are slippery little critters and, um, many eels don't have scales. They've evolved uh, vestigial scales makes them more slick, able to get in and out of holes and rocks. Okay. 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 Color patterns. Fishes are colorful, a lot of them. So there's a couple different types of coloration. Counter shading, this is where their dorsal surface is darker than their ventral surface. Um, and this is, uh, so that when it's mostly in deep water, um, deeper water. So if they are being observed from the top, when you look down on a fish, their darker dorsal surface blends into the dark water underneath them. If they are being observed from underneath, they are generally silhouetted against the sun coming through the water, and that white ventral surface will blend in. I'm doing this like... <laughs> I'm actually in the water. I'm sorry. Uh, and then, so the, that's a very common fish coloration. In fact, when we do the lab, um, I hope you get to do the lab. Um, when you, when we do the lab, you'll look at most of the fish that I have, uh, have this counter shading. Um, and then there's also disruptive coloration where they have bars and stripes that break up their silhouette. So you get, a, especially when you get a bunch of them in a school or a shoal, they, a predator can't tell one body from the next and it's harder for that predator to hone in on an individual. Um, and then cryptic coloration, that's camouflage. Warning coloration, that's an advertisement that says, don't eat me, I'll kill you. Uh, there's a lot of toxic fish. I mentioned the puffer fish the other day. Uh, there's, there's a lot of fish that have toxins in there tissues that deter predators and they tell the predators don't eat me and there are some fish that are not actually toxic but they mimic uh, they look like other toxic fish okay all right let's take a look at some of those so disruptive um this is a cardinal fish um i have uh, i have one of those they're cute but he's got these disruptive bars and so does this angel um so when you get a bunch of them together or when you get them against colorful rocks or in the shadows, it's hard to see them. Counter shading, um, again, dark on the dorsal surface, white on the ventral surface. Uh, cryptic, do you see the fish? Do you see the fish? Do you see the fish? There's frogfish right there. Those guys just blend into their substrate or their back, their surroundings. Warning coloration, so this is a mandarin dragonette, one of my other favorite fish. Um, they are, they taste bad. That's mildly poisonous to be eaten. Um, so they, they advertise that. And then um, this lionfish, they are also uh, colored with a warning pattern because they are highly venomous. They have venomous spines in their crazy big pectoral and pelvic and dorsal fins. So don't, no touchy to fishy. They're, they're pretty bad. Okay, they're also an invasive species in the Caribbean. Okay, so those are coloration types. And that's all I'm going to talk about. Um, so in class today, we're going to be doing the fish lab where uh, students will actually be looking at um, preserved specimen fish and identifying uh, them externally. If you are working from home, um, I will try to post pictures of all of the fish that we look at so that you can hopefully identify all of the the fins and the coloration on those fish because that's going to be on the test. So if if um, if you are not in class today, 
because of quarantine or being sick, but you would like to come in and take a look at the fish that I have, let me know you can make an appointment on a Friday that's a non-student day and come in, take a look at my fishies. I'll share, okay? Okay. The other assignment is there is a quiz on Canvas, okay? Okay. Again, if you're, not in if you're not in school because of quarantine or because you're sick, just shoot me an email and let's talk about how to get you through this assignment. Okay? Okay. Have a great day. Have a great week. Um, be good. Be kind. Be smart. And um, bye.